you know, when I ventured out into nature, into the desert, right? I live in the Mojave Desert near Joshua Tree. I realized I was also in a food desert. And to grow your own food, mm -hmm. it takes weeks or months or years. And sprouts were something that I always knew were nutritious. And, but I always relegated them as a side dish or as a garnish. And then here, Ew. I was having an, ex, an existential crisis. What was I going to eat? Dr. Mindy here. Your body is in a, in a war zone. This is different yes. parts of the brain get activated depending upon how stressed you are. When you look at it from that inflammatory. That's interesting. I mean, that has some merit to it for sure. And you can't control everything. Yeah, I'd say. And what about the uh, a woman who is not pregnant, but she's aiming? I just want to dive in and, and uh, uh, this might be the wrong word to use, but I want to dive into the meat of why we need to start to look at the micronutrients that uh, sprouts can really provide us because, you know, what, what we talked about coming into this conversation, Doug, is just how um, important getting sprouts into the, into every home from a nutrient level. So, um, so my first question to you is, you know, what is it about sprouts and the nutrient power that it punch the punch that it gives that we can't get in any other food? Why have you why have you taken this on as your cause? And what is it about sprouts that is really changing people's health? Yeah, the, the most important thing um, was the accessibility to sprouts like I lived in New York, LA, San Francisco for most of my adult life. And then, you know, when I ventured out into nature, into the desert, right? I live in the Mojave Desert near Joshua Tree. I realized I was also in a food desert. And to grow your own food, hmm. it takes weeks or months or years. And sprouts were something that I always knew were nutritious. And, but I always relegated them as a side dish or as a garnish. And then here yeah. I was having an ex an existential crisis. What was I going to eat? And so, mm -hmm. you know, while staring up at the galaxy and the Milky Way, we have very dark skies here. I saw all the stars twinkling and I got the download for my book, the Sprout book, that three real um, principles. Number one, sprouts were vegetables. And I always thought of them as a garnish but they are full on vegetables. And number two, sprouts were vitamins and minerals. So if we think about people taking billions of dollars of vitamin supplements, synthetic, processed, additives, fillers, multivitamins, protein powders, the fact is that you could, if you were to do a blood panel, urine, fecal analysis, microbiome, you could um, identify where you were um, deficient or depleted and replete yourself through the nutrients of sprouts. And if you want to get higher concentrations of protein, um, the legumes, the soy, the garbanzo, the lentils are incredible sources of proteins. And that every single sprout contains every amino acid to become a complete protein. Some more than others, yeah. the combination of them make them complete. And so that was really powerful insightfully that sprouts were vitamins and minerals. And the third one, which really blew my mind, was that sprouts were medicine, that they had mechanisms and compounds in them that could detoxify benzene from the lungs, that could kill cancer cells, that could open up the NRF2 pathways, that could um, create um, and address inflammation, that could attack early um, Alzheimer's, that could regulate insulin levels in diabetics. And there was all of this science, nutrition-backed science behind the sprouts, but no one had pulled it all together. No one went over the top fanatical about sprouts because we live in an affluent convenience culture. So we can go, most okay. people who are affluent can go buy, go to a health food store, go to a, a restaurant, um, buy online high quality nutrients. And the poor people aren't worried about nutrition. The poor people are basically, unfortunately, eating fast food, processed food, refined food, you know, and basically 
developing all of these chronic illnesses. So it was really both um, corner cases that could need it the most. The middle of the road where people are yeah. eating moderately, they don't need fasting as much. They don't need sprouts as much. They're just you know, living their mediocre, comfortable life along the way. Yeah, well, you know, my audience knows that uh, health happens in the discomfort. You know, there's that principle of hormetic stressor that we've got to put our put ourselves in little micro stressors to be able to grow stronger. So I, I love that you you say that. One of the questions I have for you as a as an avid salad maker, like that is my one of my superpowers. I make salads every night. When my kids lived at home, that was, I mean, that was, I always used to say it was my love language to my family. So, but when I looked at what I would put together in a salad, I knew from a microbiome standpoint that a variety of lettuces would be good. So if I could put, you know, kale and I could put the, a spring mix and arugula and I put it all together, that it would, ha would give my microbiome a, a more vast uh, prebiotic piece to it and feed the good microbes. But I never thought of using sprouts, and I do use sprouts in, in my salads, but I never looked at, gosh, when I, when I put together, put sprouts in my salad, not only am I getting more nutrients, but what I just heard you say is I'm also getting protein. So if we just bring this down to a level of someone wanting to make a salad, are we better off like just taking a bunch of sprouts and putting it next to our meal? Or is, you know, is, is, is it have more nutrient power than like arugula, for example? Yeah. I mean, so I stopped buying salad mixes and lettuces um, years ago, five years ago. So I grow all of my own greens for my salads in the form of sprouts. So if you look on my TikTok at Sprout Wiz or on my Instagram, I'm just using salads used to be a garnish. Now salads are the center of my plate. So uh, when you talk about diversity, I'm growing six to 12 jars, alfalfa, azuki, radish, clover, broccoli, chia, lentils, fenugreek, mm. all variety of peas. So I'm growing them and it's an incredible metamorphosis that occurs. When you take a seed, which looks like a little pebble, right? It's a complete living organism. When you soak it and germinate it, it transforms into a vegetable and something as simple as a lentil. You're doubling the antioxidant levels. You're tripling the vitamin C. And when the shoot comes out and the root comes out, you're getting bioavailable, um, soluble and insoluble fiber. So that tender insoluble fiber you're actually able to feed the microbiome and you're able to extract the water-based nutrition from this cytoplasm. So it's extremely rich. So that's my form of a salad. When you take um, some of the legumes and you're sprouting the legumes, the lentils, the peas, um, the garbanzo beans, the mung beans, um, you're actually removing the phytic acids. You're lowering the lectin levels you're removing the enzyme inhibitors mm. and through the rinsing process, right? So the exudate is rinsed away and you're getting like this tender nutrient dense vegetable. So even like a handful of garbanzo beans is like 20 grams, sprouted garbanzo beans is 20 grams of protein. So you're getting this variety. I, I never heard, I think you told me that the last time we talked, but I have never heard that before. And it's really cool because what we talk a lot about in the fasting movement is that you need to add protein back in to stimulate mTOR. mTOR is muscle growth. So when you go into a fasted state, you're really stimulating autophagy. But on the other side of that is mTOR. And mTOR is growth. And in order to do that, you've got to get 30 grams of protein, specifically at that first meal that you break your fast with. So what I just heard is that you could take, like, let's say you're not a vegetarian. Let's say you eat meat. You could take just a little bit of meat and put some sprouts next to it. And you've now amplified the protein content. Or if you are vegan, you could take 
at so much of of a sprout sprouted sprout from a garbanzo bean, and you've now got your protein, your thirty grams of protein if you measure. Oh my it God, out. we we could create M- Mindy. This is uh, I'm so excited. We can create a a protein breakfast sprouting mix with azuki, with lentils, with green peas, with garbanzo beans, and with soy. Like the best way to eat soy is sprouted soybeans. Mm -hmm. There's no question. Organic sprouted soybeans is the way to eat sprouts. And, you know, there's this other thing that we don't, most people don't talk about in nutrition because it's just too difficult. And that's called living foods, right? So when you're eating something that's living, like when you're eating a normal salad, it's raw, right? It's raw. It's, it's a leaf of a plant. It's the, it's the floret of the plant. But it's been cut away from its root system. So it's actually in the dying and decaying stage. When you're eating a sprout, it's in the life force stage. The root, the shoot, the root hairs... The embryo, the endosperm is all alive and you're getting this enzymatically rich um, system, which is part of the active means of when you, you know, in order to activate the sulforaphane from broccoli sprouts, you're taking the broccoli sprouts, which have the isothiocyanates, the glucosinolates, and you mix that with the enzyme myrosinase, which is very volatile. So the compound mm. glucoraphanin is shelf stable, but the enzyme myrosinase is volatile, which is why when you cook it, you deplete it. And so if you take that, the little vacuoles, when you chew them, crush them, freeze them, they mix them together and you get the active uh, compound sulforaphane. So there's, there's this whole science of sprouting, which is incredible, which is why I, when I moved to the desert, I lived exclusively on sprouts for 30 days and I felt just so healthy. And now I eat sprouts and fruit because I love my fruits. Right. And, and so that's where I am. So I want to make sure I answered your question, why I'm enthusiastic about sprouts. Uh, Yeah, I love it. I love what you're saying. And so let me just make sure that we don't, that I want the listener to really grab what you just said. Um, sure. So when I have a, gar- a garbanzo bean, well, let's use a chia, chia, chia seed as an example. You, sure. you can sprout from a chia seed? Yeah, yeah. Chia yeah, and so flax that's, sprout. Okay, so let's use flax as, an, as both of those are prebiotics. Prebiotics so and they, high they, in ALA. Okay, so when I sprout them, is there more nutrient in the sprout than the original seed itself? Yeah, the, the, there's something magical, right? And it's in nature that if you were to do an assay on a flax seed and you were to look at the water component and you go one plus one, this is what we hear. But if you were to look at those over days of time, you are manifesting and creating new compounds like you're literally increasing the volume and it's not just water. It's somehow sequestering carbon from the atmosphere and the, the, the stem cells within there are actually growing into their fullest potential, which is why you're doubling and tripling um, the various compounds inside the vitamin C, the antioxidants, the fibers, it's growing. And this is occurring without soil, without fertilizer. Like the, the right. energy within the sprouts in the first week, that's the magic of sprouts. Oh my gosh. Okay. I, I It's funny because, you know, you and I sat on a panel uh, for Jesse's uh, uh, Build Your Life resume group. And I, and when you, when I heard you sp- speak a couple of years ago, I was like, yeah, that's really solid. Like I hadn't really thought of sprouts like that. But now you're giving me even an, an even deeper understanding of it because I feel like we definitely need to be adding more protein into our diets, especially for like menopausal women and perimenopausal women. Um, but then we also need more nutrients. So what I'm hearing is there's this 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 ability to sprout from 
from these seeds and these legumes is really a, a powerful nutrient punch that we don't we can't find another resource to get that same kind of powerful nutrient punch. And then yeah. what I also just heard that I want to chat about is you take the lectins and oxalates out when you sprout. Is that is that all? I also hear that right? Yeah. Well, you you would you reduce the lectins the lectins and you reduce the phytic acid. And at the stage, there's very low oxalates that are in in the seeds in the sprouts. So and okay. you know there's so much misinformation going on. Like you know I get trolled all the time by people saying plants have defense mechanisms. And of course, everything has a defense mechanism. A carnivore has a defense mechanism, you know, teeth and, and claw, right? We all have defense mechanisms. The defense mechanisms of a carnivore are designed to kill other predators um, and risk factors. The defense mechanisms in the plants, the predators of the plants are insects. And so when the when an insect bites into the plant, you know, that um, glucoraphanin and the myrosinase form the sulforaphane, which actually um, averts the, the insect and is the defense mechanism. When we consume it, it kills cancer cells. It creates the heat shock proteins. So when you talk about in your work, the hormesis sprouts, um, create hormesis. So the, the defense mechanisms in the plants are one of the number one tools you can use for a hermetic response in the body through the heat shock proteins, similar to soaking in a warm bath for 104 degrees, similar to fasting and similar to cold plunge. Uh, okay. That, that was profound. So again, I want to break that down here for a moment. Yeah. So because is that is that because there's a little bit of lectin um going in this is what and i'm just picking that one out when you're eating a sprout it, it's like a little tiny stress which is what hormesis is that is causing the microbiome to activate and grow stronger is that is that That's what right. i just yeah. heard in that? The, like the, the biological response in the body to broccoli sprouts is actually heat shock proteins and and that is what makes them, you know, you know, there's a peer reviewed published paper by Dr. Jed Fahey, who's on my scientific advisory board. And his paper on autism shows that the broccoli sprouts trigger the heat shock proteins, which lessen the symptoms of autism, right? So that's in a very specific neurological case, but you could easily transfer that into the case of what we're looking for you know, for um, the, the hacking of the body um, for that. And it translates. So what I'm doing is I'm connecting the dots on these disparate yeah. points um, to pull yeah. them all together as part of my sprout thesis. And normally when you, when you buy those organic greens in the store for your salads, you may be spending a dollar to two per ounce, right? When you're growing your own sprouts, you could be spending a dollar or two per pound. So you're getting 10x right. the volume of nutrition through doing a little of the work on your own. Yeah. So when I go, that leads me to one thought I had, which is if I go to my grocery store and I just pull out the little, you know, I can buy sprouts all the time now at my grocery store. But it's my guess, like all other vegetables, the longer it sits there, the less nutrient value it's going to have. So are we better off just growing it at home? I know growing it like in the jar, like you talk about and your book talks about is really, you know, more econ makes more economical sense. But, but in, in my busy rushing woman lifestyle, if I just grab some from the store, is that going to have the same nutritional uh, punch as if I grow it in a jar? You know, the... The, the, it all depends where you live, right? And who the supplier is today, right? Mm -hmm. On January 11th, 2023, there are no national sprout growers, right? So everything is local or regional. So if you have, if you live in a city and you're in San Jose, there's a health food store there and they're being grown locally. They're doing small batches and you go, they, they're super nutritious 
and super good. And actually, they're still growing. Even in the refrigerator, they're still growing. So you want to check the expiration date, the grow date, and when you, the sprouts should not smell and they shouldn't be slimy. So if they are crispy, crunch, the, the bright whites like your eyes are all clear, then they're, then they're good and it's valuable. I eat packaged sprouts when I travel um, frequently. It's the first thing I do. Like I will, I got this from my buddy, Mike Posner. When I go to a hotel now, I'll call the hotel in advance and say, empty the mini bar. No, I want nothing in there but an empty fridge. Take out the candy, take out the alcohol, take out the soda. I want an empty refrigerator. And then I go on to Instacart, to Whole Foods, and I have them deliver, you know, my sprouts, the greens, you know, whole, some lemon, tahini. So I, I'm set up for success when I travel. So shout out to Posner, you know, for, for coming up with that idea. But that's what I do. So I love packaged sprouts. And it's all a matter of like, if you can afford like a little pack of sprouts is $3 to $5 in the health food store. If you grow them on your own, it's 30 cents, but you have to grow them. So it takes a little time. So it, it's like, yeah. you know, if you want to, if you want instant gratification, you go to a furniture store, they deliver the furniture. You want to have some sweat in the game, Swedish design and engineering. You go to Ikea and you put it together yourself. So in your book, do, do you talk about how we grow it? Do you give us instructions oh, yeah. my, on how we can grow? Yeah. My book was ba like, I wrote the Sprout book because I had no clue of what I was doing. So I kept my captain's logs of all of my activity. And turns out you grow chia and flax differently than you grow um, lentils and mung beans, which is different than alfalfa and broccoli and, and clover. So there was a variety. So I kept all my logs. Then I did as much research as I could going deep on why to sprout, how to sprout, what are the nutritional benefits and difference characteristics of sprouts. Like chia and flax contain the highest amount of plant-based ALA, medium chain omega-3 fatty acids. And when you combine that, the body can convert ALA into EPA and DHA, um, but it's not like 100%. It may be between 1 and 10%. But if you're getting, a, if you're eating it on a regular basis, you will get more than enough ALA to get that. If you just want to cheat a little and, and boost it, just adding seaweed or plant-based algae, which has the EPA and DHA in it, which is my most frequent recipe that I post, is a nori wrap because the nori has the mm. EPA, DHA, omega threes. So that's an important uh, part um, to share. Uh, so, okay, what do you say if you know where my brain goes with with everything you just said? Is okay, that works great if you have a good, healthy gut. What if I've been on multiple rounds of antibiotics, decades of birth control, my microbiome is a hot mess. Am I gonna be able to use sprouts? We know they're prebiotic. We know that there's, they've got all these nutrients, but if my, if my gut is so decimated and so depleted, am I gonna still pull those nutrients out? Or is this one of those things that if we do it over time, we're going to start to rebuild the microbiome and eventually you're getting bet more and more nutrient absorption as the microbiome changes. Well, I, I think, you know, you, you, you know, the answer to that, you do your fat, you do your fasting, all different kinds of fasting, intermittent fasting, 13 hour fast, 24 hour fast, seven day fast, and you start to clean up your microbiome. And then from the source That's of right. nutrition, you want to have, soluble and insoluble fiber that's super nutrient that has the phytonutrients. So at the, if you have a, a crappy microbiome, right, and you eat sprouts, the consequence will be some bloating, some flatulation, because this is potent medicine and you're eating it. If you chew it well, right, and you stare at literally the, the same way that if a mother is staring at the baby, 
it starts to lactate, right? It starts to generate the, the breast milk. For, for us, mm -hmm. we live in a fast, um, fast food culture where we, we're, we're operating too fast. So if we stop and we stare at the, the food that we're going to eat, and we're staring at the sprouts, we will begin to salivate like Pavlov's dog. And so the digestion begins with the eyes, translates into the saliva, and then the body is starting to form the digestive um, energy, flora, enzymes, acids to help break it down. Um, but if you just take someone, you, you, you force feed them some sprouts, the, it's not going to work as much. So you could do one of two things. You could start having a sprout salad. You could add some lemon as an acidulant to help break it down and make it available. Um, you can add healthy fats like olives um, to it. I'm more of a proponent of whole fats. Like I'll buy coconut, old coconut, and I'll eat the coconut for a fat. I'll eat avocados for a fat. I will eat olives for fats. So I won't do oils because I think you're stripping away the phytonutrients and the, the fiber, but I want the fat. So I love high quality fats in their whole form. Great idea. Yeah, it's a good. And then now, you know, if you just take the olive, the olive is so rich in polyphenols. And so you're taking that polyphenol and you're combining it with the prebiotic power of the, of the sprout. And you, I mean, from a microbiome standpoint, that's, that's absolutely brilliant. And the other thing I want to point out that I don't think you and I have talked about is the idea. I, I actually sat and, and interviewed multiple times Stephen Gundry on the oxalate and lectin issue. And I wanted to hear from the horse's mouth. One, I had one question for him. And this was the question. If I have a healthy microbiome, are oxalates and lectins, are they my enemy? Like if I have a good microbiome, do I need to avoid plants? And he's like, of course not. He went all into this whole thing about everybody took the plant paradox to an extreme and that we have to look at integrating plants for a variety of reasons. But what I, what I, I love about what you said is that we have this reduced lectin piece that is gonna create this hormetic stressor in, in the gut. And part of why I asked you the question was I want people to understand that if you start to br branch into sprouts like you're recommending, if you get bloated, if you get constipated, that's a good thing because that's telling you that the body needs to repair itself. So stick with it, combine it with fasting to your point. Thank you for noticing and pointing out that fasting is so powerful in the microbiome because that's one of my, my, my passions to get to the world. But I, I'm thinking... If we take fa fasting and we break it with the with the sprouts, that is and, and and a longer fast, like a 24 hour fast, breaking it with the combination of sprouts you just mentioned, we have a, a complete microbiome repair system at that point. A ab absolutely. I mean, this is something that you know one of my biggest proponents um, is a Dr. B who wrote um, Fiber Fuel. Yeah. Right. And so yeah. he's a gastroenterologist um, who's, you know, he's had sprouts in both of his books. And, you know, like yeah. that was a big concern. And he's on that specific level. So I'm glad you, you know, asked uh, Dr. Um, Gundry about that because, you know, a lot of people ask that and people just don't know. And, you know, like I'm glad also, I love that here that you were hearing salads because. The carnivores, I think that the that I love meat, right? I ate meat every day, you know, from you know the time I was weaned till I was 33 years old. I ate meat, chicken, fish every day. I ate raw meat. I ate steak tartare. I ate raw eggs, and then you know this was well before I even heard about the APOB gene, right, or LDL cholesterol. I watched right physically. My aunt get diabetes and um, they, they had to chop off both of her feet below her ankles. And the misnomer is we think diabetics, you know, diabetes is caused by sugar. No, diabetes is caused by insulin resistance. So if you're overweight, 
and you can get overweight by eating a variety of different things. But in particular, I remember my aunt would eat, you know, a lot of meat, right? And then a lot of, of processed carbs. And consequentially, she had um, both of her feet amputated below her ankles and then died the same year, um, which is a younger age than I am right now. And so I watched that. Then I watched my uncle get heart disease and die. My mother got stomach cancer and died. And my father got heart disease and died. And my brother has developed type 2 diabetes, atrial fibrillation, became overweight, obese, and has had three strokes and a heart attack. And just two weeks ago over Christmas, he had to go um, spend the seven days in the hospital getting a um, cardio aversion, which failed. And then they had to do an ablation on his heart. So I was surrounded by these lifestyle-induced diseases. And that's when I had this consciousness of everything that I'm going to feed myself is going to be high quality nutrition. I went down this path totally objectively. And it was hard for me to give up the things that I loved. My mouth still waters at the smell of rosemary chicken, right? I still yeah. get excited when I see a medium red steak, right? Like a T-bone or something. But, but under no circumstances Will I go there because I'm aware of, right. of the consequences? I would have to say just on that lifestyle piece that um, I, I'm, I am a big fan of meat. Um, I think, and I love the idea of taking the best that, that the plant world has to offer and the best that the animal world has to offer. And how do we bring it together? I am not a fan of, of absolutes. And, um, but when we look at meat and we look at what's killing people, it's the toxic, it's the, it's the hormones they're putting in the meat and the, and the toxic, uh, part of growing an animal, killing an animal, and then eating it. We've got, we've got all those toxins that are involved in that. And that's part of the, the major issue. Um, when it comes to the amino acid profile of sprouts at, versus meat, so, so I don't want to leave the meat conversation. Because I feel like it's easy for us. Again, we look for absolutes in healthcare. And I'm trying to get everybody out of the absolute lane. Because once we start saying plants are bad, uh, meat's bad, we, we've taken bio-individuality out of the picture. And everybody's microbiome and, and genetics are going to tell you you need different foods. So when we look at 20 grams of protein in a, in a, a, a what, however, let's say a cup of sprouts, and we compare that 20 gram of protein to meat, is it the same amino acid profile? Because that matters for neurotransmitter production um, and hormone production. Well, it, it's interesting. When you're getting it from meat, right? It's theoretically all there. Meat is a complete protein. If you want to, right. if you're eating enough calories and you're eating enough variety of sprouts or other vegetables, you are getting a complete um, protein unequivocally. Like I'm 56 years old, right? I have absolutely no protein deficiency. My blood work um, is pristine. And so I'm seeing the, the effect of doing it. But what happens is, you know, people um, basically um, attempt to emasculate um, people who are eating plants. And there's this association, not with you, um, but there's association with eating meat. It's like masculine, you know, liver king. Yeah, it's really like, true. Yeah. Right? right. In, in the health of, world, it's very much like that right now. And, and the reality is, um, you know, it's the, the consequences of, you know, sustainable living, right? So I look at what can we do sustainably? right? What can we do to feed yeah. the world? And when we have a, a situation yeah. today, which is like, it's starting to bring me to tears. I'm going into my feminine right now, but we have 10,000 people a day dying of starvation, dying of starvation, right? And for yeah. every calorie that's grown of plants, 10 calories are fed to animals, right? Who are living like this, this hellacious life, 
And then we have the depletion, depletion of natural resources and the like. So in, in a way, if we're thinking about, you know, all, right, all people, all creatures on the planet, that's where, you know, I, I'm not going to tell other people what to do, but I will say that it takes 1,500 gallons of water to prepare one pound of beef. And you can prepare one pound of sprouts with one gallon of water. Like, think about that. Yeah. 1,500 gallons of water versus one gallon of water. And look, I, I encourage you to, um, are, how, have you researched the APOB um, biomarker and the APOG POG genes? I will tell you that I have not, um, and let, let me tell you why. Because um, I believe in epigenetics, and I've recently been um, aligning with um, the founder of the DNA company, who is looking at genetics from a uh, functional level. Um, because to me, there our, our genetics should tell us what we like, give us an idea about our lifestyle. So, to your point, with that gene, you know, it can give us an idea about what lifestyle we should live. But um, I don't believe that if my father has, you know, cardiovascular disease, I, and that's in my genetics, that I'm predisposed to, to having cardiovascular disease. I believe I can change my lifestyle, and that's going to affect my genetic outcome. So that's why I don't put a lot of attention yeah. on genes. Yeah, I, I 100% agree with you. Like, I feel like I thought that I was genetically cursed through my lifestyle, right. right? I cold plunge every day at 37, 38 degrees. I, I sit for up to an hour in a natural mineral hot spring at 108, 109 degrees, where I'm trying to increase my body temperature by one degree centigrade. And I'm eating stressors and plant-based. So I have distanced myself from any concern of the genes. But I'm looking yeah. at a level of health sustainability, that what can we do? And also, Great. look, I lived in a tent for three years until I got married. And then when my wife came, she lived in the tent with me for eight months. And then we finally got a, like, got a, got a house, you know, and now we have a child. So we're, we're living a more, you know, pedestrian life, but small and austere. When I was living in the tent and in nature, no TV, no cable, Intuitively, um, when I had an abundance of sprouts, right, just an abundance of sprouts, I felt so complete in my life that I didn't have this lacking. I didn't have this neurosis or the cravings. They were all averted. So I think there's a psychological benefit to doing that. Yeah. I, you know, I think here's what, what I was thinking as you were just talking over the last like 20 minutes is that, you know, again, if we go back to the plant-based animal-based um, argument, I'm just going to call it an argument, not that yeah. we're having, but that the world is having is what I just learned about sprouts is it sort of threads a different needle because one of the arguments of the carnivore people is that, well, you can't get enough protein in vegetables. Um, and what I just heard from you is, well, sprouts are immune from that. They've, they've got more protein than other typical um, vegetables. And then I also feel like then one of the, the, the um, arguments is, well, it's not a complete protein. And what I just heard is actually sprouts are a complete protein. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I think that's a, it's, it's a different, it's almost like it shouldn't go in the vegetable category or even in the plant category, even though I know it needs to go there needs to go in like a superfood category. Yeah, but I, I mean, I think the thing is the, the, the idea of the carnivore diet is sexy and, you know, and fatty and definitely masculine to be in the, the, the carnivore diet. The idea that, you know, um, major global health organizations around the world have come to the conclusion um, without without like gun to their head right vegans aren't pointing guns and daggers at them that you can be at any stage of life from you know infant first food 
through geriatric care, all stages of life, that you could eat 100% plant-based, um, do it. So, so there's no question on the nutrition level. Now, there's a major difference between someone who's eating whole food, plant-based, mostly raw, lots of sprouts, lots of you know cultured food and nutrients versus someone that's eating you know vegan macaroni and cheese, vegan Oreos, soda, right. processed you. food, yeah. you know yeah. the these like yeah. plant-based burgers that who knows where they came from. Like yeah, I mean there's such a difference and that's where you know to me I'm not telling people what to do, right? I'm inviting them right. to the possibility of adding sprouts to their diet from a complete level, adding a little few sprouts to the fact that I right now, you know, just, um, just, I don't even know how it happened, but people are taking this, like taking the sprouts and running with them. Right. And, and that's what happened on social media, you know, where no, I have 25 no, 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 videos on, on TikTok that have, have, over a yeah. million views on TikTok where people are trying and they're, the messages that I'm getting is that they're eating sprouts all the time. They're losing weight. They're gaining it. They're yeah. sharing it. They're growing, you know, like so much content is coming up. And then, you know, people are like, oh, it's got to taste good, right? And I got to tell you, raw meat doesn't taste good. Raw kale doesn't taste good unless people season it, they cook it, they process it. They flavor it. And as a matter of fact, sprouts taste as good, if not better, than any other vegetable. And you can even make spices. Like if someone likes spicy food, like the mustard sprouts, the radish sprouts, even the broccoli sprouts, can have a big kick to them. And you almost have to neutralize them with a healthy fat, like a tahini or an avocado. Yeah, yeah. What you know, one thought I had is the, the one of the arguments for carnivore is that it when you go solely carnivore you uh, you stimulate t regulatory cells uh in the gut and t regulatory cells will balance the immune system out so carnivore has been insanely great for people with autoimmune conditions now what i'm wondering is with this lower lectin level of a sprout if you if you know again we're putting the sprouts into a different category because but i don't think a purely sprout diet is going to have that same T regulatory effect. But what I am learning in this conversation is it's not going to have the inflammatory uh, effect or the, the, the immune response that like, like something that's dense, like kale, you know, everybody seems to hate kale um, is going to have in the gut. So do you, yeah. do we know what the difference is around the, the T regulatory cells and the well, immune response? But, but it's interesting. To, to, even, you know, Mr. Carnivore MD, you know, as of February of 2022 is saying carnivores need to eat fruit, right? And so he's having all oh, sorts yeah, no. of, right? So, yeah. huh? Agreed. Like, you know, Agreed. so, so what happens is, Agreed. you know, what I can tell you is in isolation, right? The, the benefit of the carnivore diet is um, if you can get someone just to eat meat, they're eliminating all of this crap, right? And they're giving their gut a chance to heal. But there, there haven't been long-term studies, long-term research over, you know, the impact on the gut beyond the regulating of the, of the T-cells over time, what will happen, especially with the deficiency of phytonutrients, micronutrients, polyphenols, bioflavonoids, um, the prebiotics. It, it's you know, the, these things, you can have an effect, like any major shift, you know, away from processed food is going to have a positive effect on the body, right? I yeah. think that um, we don't know about carnivore. I could just tell you that my gut, which is very clean, operating at a high level, my intuition is very, very powerful. Um, right. I can tell you my gut says that when, when I see a cow, I want to go pet it. Like, I don't want to chew on its eyeballs, eat all four of its stomach, chew on its bone marrow, you know, eat the, the blood. It's it just, it, it feels like 
there was a time that meat was sensationalized as the, the food of the wealthy. And I could tell you, as soon as I made right. my first like paycheck where I made a thousand dollars in New York city, I went to a, a steakhouse, Peter Luger's, and I ordered the biggest steak because that was the recognition, the status, you know, of arriving financially, et cetera. And as I became more self-aware, more in tune, I felt like I can get my protein and all nutrient requirements from eating a, and my diet is 100% plant-based, mostly raw, mostly sprouts, fruits, seaweeds, um, et cetera. If I eat seeds and nuts, I soak them, germinate them, and low temperature dehydrate them. So I'm removing the enzyme inhibitors and making them a more bioavailable. And, I, and again, I, I don't want people to lose that nuance that you're, you're, the way you're going about making the sprouts, the soaking of the seeds, all of that is so important for getting rid of the, the components to these things that could possibly uh, create any kind of gut dysbiosis. Um, the, the other real important question that I, I want to have with you or dialogue I want to have with you is, um, do we have any examples of somebody able to build muscle on a sprout filled diet? And, and because I want to go back to this idea that protein serves many purposes and the amino acid breakdown is really important. But, you know, my, my, a lot of my following is women over 40. And as we go into menopause, and our ovaries are not producing sex hormones anymore, all of a sudden, the job of making sex hormones gets handed over to the adrenals. And what I found is that a lot of women, when they are adrenal fatigued, their body will break down muscle in order to get those nutrients to be able to make the sex hormones, allow the sex hormones to be produced from the adrenals. So I say all that to say muscle wasting is a major, major problem for women as they move through menopause. Do we have any idea of what sprouts could do to build muscle? Uh, Mindy, 2023 is going to be the year of sprouts unleashed. Okay. So we, we just, <laughs> let's make a note to have a follow up the end of this year. Yes. And we're going to have, like, I'm personally working with, I'm coaching, I'm supporting people. You're going to see the fittest, most ripped, strong um, bodies that are sprout based and unleashed. So you're going to see it. <laughs> I'm even motivated. Like I, I haven't been a gym rat since I was 17 years old. Right. But now like I'm going to start unleashing myself and everyone around me. And you're going to see incredible amounts of protein and superior strength from a sprout forward diet. Sprout forward. I love it. So we're get, here's what I, my commitment to you, Doug, is that I'm going to go back to our membership academy that has thousands of menopausal women in it. And I'm going to bring what I just learned and we'll try practicing uh, uh, and experimenting with breaking our fast with sprouts. And then we'll start integrating it and see what we're noticing as far as muscle, muscle strength as well. And, and I agree. We, let's, let me do that with them for the next six months and then let's report back and see what we notice. Yeah. And I'm happy if you want, and I'm happy to just volunteer my services. If you want me to zoom in or participate or share information okay. and I will go back and I'll yeah. formulate and help come up with a break mm. fast sprout protein mix to help people when they come off of a water fast or they come off of in, intermittent fasting, sprouts would become the first food that they eat. Love it. Let's do it. I, I will take you up on that. That would be amazing, that formula. And then we'll definitely bring you into the community. So I, I love where this conversation yeah. went. So um, let me let me finish up with this question. So this is totally in another category, um, but I love talking to you, Doug, and I, and I want to respect your time. And um this has just been amazing. Um, this year, every year I pick a, a, um, a theme for the Resetter podcast. And this year I've picked the, the idea of self-love. And I, I find that a lot of times we don't, we don't love on ourselves enough. So do you have a practice around self-love where you say kind things to you, um, to yourself, that you take amazing care of yourself? 
And then, the, and then the other question to that, I know this is a good one is what are some of your superpowers? Like, uh, you know, what, what do you think you is a really incredible attribute that you bring to the world? I, I mean, I love these questions. I feel like I'm writing these questions for you to ask me. And that's what I'm talking about. My intuitive <laughs> manifestation. Capability. Okay. Like, Jessica Love. was giving me the Heisman for like nine months or a year till we got on here. And I persisted until I succeeded. So one of my superpowers is I am yeah. persistent, right? There's no question, right? If I think about love in one of the, the mantra type um, information that I share with my five month old baby every day, I recite her a whole chapter and verse on love. And one of them, and I'll just go right into the, the, the middle of it because I don't want to take six minutes and do the whole soliloquy, um, but I'll greet this day with love in my heart. And most of all, I will love myself for when I do, I will zealously inspect all things that enter my body, my mind, my soul, and my heart. Never will I overindulge the requests of my flesh Rather, I'll cherish my body with cleanliness and moderation. Never will I allow my mind to be attracted to evil and despair. Rather, I will uplift it with the knowledge and wisdom of the ages. And so this is part of the thing that I'm saying to myself every day. I'm sharing it with my daughter. And self-love, I do the ice bath. I, I live and soak in the hot springs. I do my running. I look at everything that I put in my mouth as a life or death decision, life or death decision. So I am eating the highest quality nutrients on a per calorie basis. And only now that I am coming into 2023 unleashed, like I am going to share this message with the world. I'm going to live it and I'm experiencing it. And this is the perfect time. Like if we would have done this podcast six months ago, I would not be as tuned in to where we are right now. I love it. I love it. You know, the other thing I was thinking is sprouts, eating sprouts is self-love, you know, like your your passion for sprouts and how you eat sprouts is a form of self-love. And I want, I want people to understand what you just said is so powerful. When we take amazing care of ourselves, we are not depriving ourselves. We are actually telling our bodies how much we love we love it. And so therefore, I care about your body so much that I am going to feed you the right food. I'm going to hang around the right people so my thoughts are right. I'm going to make sure that I put myself in environments where my I can grow physically, spiritually, and, and emotionally in a real positive way. To me, that's self-love. Absolutely. And think about that you get to grow your own food, that you are co-creating with nature. This food, this high quality nutrition. Yeah, yeah. I love well, it. Well, Mindy, I think well, that's Doug, a great place to, to, to wind down. And agreed, agreed. Tell me, tell me where people so the, so my audience knows where to find you. And I, you know, I hope everybody goes out and gets the book. But you're on a bigger mission than just what you wrote in the book. So how do people find you? Yeah. So I'm on. Instagram at my name, Doug Evans, D-O-U-G-E-V-A-N-S. I'm on TikTok at Sprout Wiz, S-P-R-O-U-T-W-I-Z. And you could sign up for my newsletter at thesproutbook.com, you know, and I'm just sharing information and resources. And that's it. Very simple. And I answer most DMs, anything that's not any, like, like I've had trolls that I don't have the time to answer in depth all trolls, but I can tell you that dozens of people that were antagonistic about you have to eat meat, you know, you don't look healthy, et cetera, that I took the time to give them more love, right? As opposed to hate and snarkiness are now sprouting. Like I could show you the thread where someone came (laughs) with a snarky comment And now they are sprouting and they're thanking me that I've changed your life. You know, they apologize for being a knucklehead, you know. And so like that's it's it's amazing transformation. So cool. 
Well, keep up the amazing work, Doug. We're going to do an experiment in my Reset Academy. I'll come back to you and, and let you know how that goes. We'd love to have you come and, and chat with them. So we'll set that time up. But I just, you know, you you and I have chatted about this before. Like, I love people on a mission to bring something, real, a really good message to the world. And that's what you're doing. So thank you so much, Doug, for being here. I really appreciate you.